This is the warm up. We want to simplify the expressions. So we look at the first one and we can simplify from within the parentheses 8 minus 6. So we've got 8 minus 16 divided by 2 times 2 squared plus 6. And now we're going to, we see, well, we see parentheses, but there's nothing going on inside of that. So I'm going to do exponents next. So 2 squared is 4, 8 minus 16 divided by 2 times 4 plus 6. And now we've got subtraction, division, multiplication, and addition. So we're going to work from left to right. So we've got negative 16 divided by 2, which would be negative 8. And now we've got subtraction, multiplication, and addition. So we're going to do the multiplication. Negative 8 times 4 is negative 32. Now, uh, now we're just going to work from left to right. 8 minus 32 is negative 24 plus 6 is negative 18 our next problem we've got a negative exponent so anytime we have a ne negative exponent we can just pull that negative exponent across the fraction bar so we get 3x cubed y squared over 9 and now we can simplify 3 goes into 3 once 3 goes into 9 3 times and so we get x cubed y squared over 3 our next one division property of exponents we subtract our exponents, so this is 8 minus 2, which equals 6. Across the bottom, we've got, uh, we're trying to solve for x, so let's distribute 8 plus 5x plus 15 minus 2x. Oh, we're just simplifying here, it looks like, since we have no equal sign. So 5x and negative 2x makes 3x, and 8 and 15 make 23. Our next one, simplifying again, m to the fourth and m to the third, when we're multiplying with the same base, we add our exponents. So that's going to make m to the seventh. n squared and n to the eighth will make n to the tenth. Our next one, over here on the right, we've got a power, or base, two powers. These are little invisible ones here. And then we're going to take that to the second power, which means we need to distribute the exponent to the other exponents. So I'll rewrite my left side. A cubed, B to the fourth, C to the sixth, times 4 squared, A squared, C to the sixth, because 3 times 2 makes 6. And now we're just going to combine them. So 4 squared is 16. A cubed and A squared will make A to the fifth power. B to the fourth. There is no other B, so that'll stay B to the fourth. And we've got C to the sixth and C to the sixth will make C to the twelfth. And we don't need to do this last one since it wasn't there. So today we're going over, well, a homework question. I'm not sure what homework question this was, but we can do it. When we see semicolons, there's some questions on that. 
when you see the semicolon, it's just asking us, is x equal to negative 2 the solution? So at the end, we'll either say yes or no. What I'm really concerned about is that we're doing the problem. So uh, 1 half, 1 half times 4x would make 2x. 1 half times negative 8 would make negative 4 equals 8. We're going to add 4. 2x equals 12. Divide by 2. And x equals 6. So it would be no. It doesn't equal negative 2. It equals 6. Today's lesson is lesson 7, solving equations with variables on both sides. So our examples here, if you see we've got an r on one side and an r on the other side. Uh, we're going to solve this just like we would, but we're going to end up getting, we're trying to isolate the variable on one side of the equation. And there's a couple different ways we can do this, and I'll show them to you. Negative 2 times 3 makes negative 6. Negative 2 times r makes negative 2r equals negative 3r minus 7. And so now, here's our, our couple different ways that we can do this. And I'm going to rewrite this. So we've got two different, got the same problem here. Okay, so now, if I want to put my r's on the left side, you know, then what I'll do is I'll want to get my variable on the left and I'll get my constants on the right. So here's what I mean by getting my variable on the left. If I move this negative 3r to the other side, well, what would I do to undo it? I'd add it. So I add 3r to this side. Now this is the way that I do this normally because now I've got negative 6 plus r equals negative 7. And now I've got a positive r here. So I'm not going to have to divide by a negative. And it's because we get confused sometimes when we divide by negatives. Now I'm just going to add 6 and add 6, and I get r equals negative 1. Let me show it to you the other way. If we were to move the r to the other side, so our r's were on the right, I'd say that I'd need to add 2r to both sides, add 2r to both sides, and I'd get negative 6 equals negative 3r and 2r makes negative 1r minus 7. We're trying to solve for r. So we're going to add 7 and add 7. And here we get negative r equals 1. But we're not quite done yet. Because this is negative 1 times r, that's a multiplication problem. So we need to divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1, and we get r equals negative 1. And so when I'm doing these problems, I don't care what side my r is on, but when I simplify them, if we look back here, if I added a 3r, that makes a positive r. If I add a 2r to both sides, it makes a negative r. I try to make it, whenever possible, to where my variable is positive, so it saves me that step at the end of dividing by negative 1. Um... Let's look at this next problem. Let me shrink this down for you guys. So there that is again. And let's do two. We see 2, I've got to distribute and distribute, so I get negative 9 plus 9x equals negative 19 minus x. And so we can see here that if I move this 9x over, I'd have to subtract it. That would make a negative 10x, but if I move the, x, the negative x that's on the right, if I add x to both sides, that'll make a positive 10x. Now, if I'm putting my variables on the left at the same step, 
I can move my constants over to the right. So I need to move this ne negative 9 to the right by adding it to both sides. Those cancel out, and I get 10x equals negative 10. Divide by 10. Divide by 10. And x equals negative 1. Some more. 3 times 4x makes 12x. 3 times 3 makes 9. Negative 19 minus 2x. Here, if I, I can see that if I were to move this negative 2x, if I add it to both sides, it'll make a positive x over here. So I'm going to add it to both sides. Add 2x. That's getting rid of the x's over on the right side. So that means that I want to move my constants to the right side. So I'm going to subtract my 9's. And I get 14x equals negative 28 divided by 14. And we get x equals negative 2. Try this one. Distribute negative 4 minus 4n equals negative 4 plus n. And here we can see that if we move this negative 4n to the other side, it'll make a positive 4n. So we're going to add 4n and add 4n. That gets rid of my n's on the left side, makes these n's positive over here. So if my n is now going to be on the right, I want to get rid of this constant. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And I get 5n. Negative 4 plus 4 makes 0. Ooh, so what happens here? Divide by 5, divide by 5, and we get n must equal 0. And that's fine that n equals 0. Here's an example of an equation with no solution. Here's what they'd look like. If we multiply 3 times 2, we'd get 6. Multiply 3 times negative x, negative 3x equals 5 minus 3x. And so here we look at this and we say either way we move this x. Let's say I wanted to move this x over here on the right over to the left side. I'd need to add 3x to both sides. But you can see what's going to happen. Negative 3x plus 3x makes 0. Negative 3x plus 3x makes 0. And we're left with something that doesn't make sense. Does 6 equal 5? So if that doesn't make sense, we say no. And then our answer is no solutions. Here's an example of an, an answer with uh, all real numbers as solutions. So we'll start to simplify this. I need to distribute a negative 3. So I've got 4 minus 6t minus 36 equals negative 2. We'll distribute this negative 2 through. So minus, oops, minus 30 minus 6t. And so here we can see that uh, when we uh, either side that we want to put our variable on, let's say we want to move it to the left, so I'm going to add 6t and add 6t to both sides. Well, what's that? What happens is those simplify out, and now I can combine my like terms. 4 minus 36 makes negative 32, and negative 2 and negative 30 makes negative 32. Does negative 32 equal negative 32? So if we get something like this, we have all real numbers. All real numbers. Anything we plug in for t will work. Um, something that you could also do, depending on how you simplify it, you could uh, you could get like t equals t, 
or something like that, and that would be all real numbers as well. Our shortcut for that, oh, it didn't show up very well, is like a, that's a shortcut for all real numbers, just the symbol we use to make, so we don't have to write all real numbers. So you guys try and do these. Take a second, try and do this. Three times fourteen x makes forty two x. Three times three makes nine. Six times seven equals forty two x. Six times one makes six plus three. Well, let's move this over. Subtract 42x, subtract 42x, let's cancel. I'm left with 9 equals, and 6 and 3 make 9, so my answer would be all real numbers. Our solutions 6, 3 times 5 makes 15, 3 times negative 6z makes negative 18z equals negative 14z, negative 2 times 1 makes negative 2, negative 2 times 2z makes negative 4z plus 2, and here we've got um, well, uh, we need to combine these and that makes negative 18z, so we've got 15 minus 18z equals negative 18z. And we can combine negative 2 and positive 2, make 0, so that just cancels. And so now when we try to get our z's to one side, if I add 18z and add 18z, I'm left with 0 on my right side. That simplifies out, and I get 15 equals 0. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. So we put a slash through it, and we say no real solutions or no solutions.